Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it might be that you're gathered with us today. As the music begins to play, I invite you to use this time as a moment just to take a few moments to let go, to let go of whatever might be drawing you away from the presence of God. I invite you in these moments that we might prepare ourselves, our hearts, for this God who is always with us. Amen. As we gather, let us come to God in prayer. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks that your love is there with us and for us in every moment. That you love each of us, this entire world, no matter what. That you invite us into that love. You welcome us into that love. And in that love, you save us from ourselves from all that separates us from you. And so, dear God, even as your love touches and transforms us, we ask that it may bring that same touch and transformation to our world, that as we grow more connected to how deeply and completely you love us, not only may we grow more deeply connected to you, but in the power of that love, we might grow to love ourselves on all those whom you place around us more deeply and completely as well. That your love working in us and in the world might heal it, might transform it, might shape this world into everything you created, you dreamed, you died for it to be. And so, Lord, we pray it all in Jesus' name. Amen. With that, I invite us to join in our opening hymn this morning, As With Gladness, Men of Old. Can we stand together as we sing this song? Step the 
to bend the knee before him whom heaven and earth adore. So may we with willing feet evermore seek thy seat. As they offered gifts most rare that the manger rude and bare, so may we with holy joy, pure and free from sins alloy, all our costless treasures bring, Christ to Thee, our heavenly King. Please be seated. As we gather this morning, I invite us uh, to join in this prayer for forgiveness, one that Samuel Johnson actually wrote for the beginning of a new year. Let us pray it together. Almighty God, by whose mercy our lives have continued for another year, forgive us where we have fallen short, where we have neglected your love in the past year. We pray that as our years increase, our sins may not increase. As age advances, let us become more open, more faithful, and more trusting in you. Let us not be distracted by lesser things from what is truly important. And if we become infirm as we grow old, may we not be overwhelmed by self-pity or bitterness. Continue and increase your loving kindness towards us, so that when you finally call us into yourself, we may enter in eternal happiness with you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. I invite you in these moments of silence, maybe to think about any regrets you carry from the year that has passed and hopes that you wish to carry into the year that is now upon us, only in its second day. And in these moments, bring them to God. I invite you to do that now. In just a few days, Christmas will end. Christmas, of course, is not one day, it's 12 days. That's why you have the song, the 12 days of Christmas. And it ends with the coming of the wise men, the Magi. And we call that holiday Epiphany. Kind of an interesting name. Because Epiphany is a word that means when something is revealed to you, something true about yourself or about the world or about life, you get an epiphany. And of course, that's true in the sense that the Magi had something revealed to them about God when they saw Jesus. But also, all of us get something revealed about God as well, that God is looking to bring everyone into God's family, even Folks from a different nation, a different religion from a thousand miles away, God extends a special invitation to them at the end of Christmas. And all the time, God is seeking to reveal to us reality. And yet too often we get caught up in our fears and our anxieties and our worries. All those things which distort reality. And so we come here acknowledging that too often in our lives we don't see things clearly. We don't see how profoundly God loves us and how that love can free us from all that holds us back. Yet in these waters of baptism, we remember that we have a God who loves each of us, who loves this entire world no matter what. And there is nothing 
in all of creation that will ever separate us from that love. In this love, we are forgiven. And in this love, we are loved no matter what. Amen? And that's such good news. What better way than the end this second Sunday of Christmas or not, than with this beautiful song from O Little Town of Bethlehem. As we come and share some of the news of the community, um, for those of you who are present in person, you know that the bulletin may look a little bit different. It's because I am not the best folder in the world, and uh, Kristen, uh, who is our office manager who created the bulletin, was not able to print it because she has been failed, as so many have, by Omicron. So she was working at a distance uh, this week from home. So uh, I think you can follow it all. So just figure it out. But uh, most of the time you're going to be on this page. And then the very last part, the last song is on the back of this one. And for these, those of you at home who are looking at the bulletin, no worries. You're going to see it on the screen. It's not going to be an issue for you. They can see it on the screen too. Also, this week I would like to invite you to stay briefly after worship um, and help remove uh, some of our Christmas decorations uh, in a socially distanced and uh, careful way. Um, due to Omicron, I will be uh, wearing my handy-dandy mask uh, uh, more than normal today as we try to stay safe um, as hopefully Omicron's wave passes over us and moves on. Um, but with that, please know that we continue to be here, continuing to serve you. Um, our learning centers reopen this week. Pray that everything stays safe there. And we'll continue to be uh, reaching to you via social media, Facebook, Instagram, uh, TikTok. And of course, you can still physically visit with us out on the patio or other places as we continue to be present with you uh, as safely as we can in these days. And with that, I invite us to hear from Javon as he leads us into the hearing of the word with the song Holy Ground. Javon. his presence and I knew this was a place where love abounds for this is a temple Jehovah God abiding and we standing in his presence on holy ground. We are standing on holy ground. And I know that there are angels all Let us pray 
is Jesus now. We are standing in his presence on holy ground. In his presence there is joy beyond all measure. And at his feet, peace of mind can still be found. If you have a need, I know he has the answer. Just reach out and claim it, for you are standing on holy ground we are standing on holy ground and I know that there are angels all around let us pray on holy ground. Holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty early in the morning a song shall rise to thee. Holy Holy, holy, merciful and mighty God in three persons, blessed Trinity, we are standing in His presence on holy ground. By the way, I, I got the word while Javon was singing that next week is the day, day we're taking down the decorations. So don't worry, never mind what I said before. <laughs> EC is going, can I go now? You're welcome. Um, you know, it was a very simple exercise, but I, I've never forgotten it. I, I was attending this five-day seminar uh, designed um, uh, to break uh, self-destructive habits or self-destructive thinking in your life. And uh, on the very first night that we gathered together, we did this exercise. We had to go and look in the eye, each person that was there, and simply say to them one of two things. Either I trust you or I don't trust you. Now, in many ways, it's kind of a silly exercise, right? Because there's no real way that you can tell if someone's trustworthy when you've just laid eyes on them a moment before. It's impossible. But, but I still did it. And as I, as I started, I looked at each of the folks and I said the same words. I said, I trust you. I thought to myself, why, why not make trust my default? Why not? But I learned quickly my default was not everyone else's by a long shot. Again and again, I heard people say to one another, 
I don't trust you. I heard people say it to me. Does this look like an untrustworthy face? Come on now. And not just a few times they said it. In fact, I heard that phrase, I don't trust you so much, I got paranoid. I thought, am I the sucker here? So I started giving out a few I don't trust you's just to save a little face. Now, have you figured out the purpose of the exercise? It was designed to challenge our presumptions, our default to not trust. After all, if we didn't trust each other, it would be hard for the seminar to do what it was designed to do. But more importantly, if you default to distrust in your life, it limits you, it holds you back. In the end, it makes you miserable. And yet it's so easy for the distrust default to happen. It happened to me simply because I saw the distrust of others in that room. Distrust is contagious, and it, and it doesn't just rob you of life, it robs you of actual money. In one study, researchers concluded that a 15% bump in a nation's belief that most people can be trusted adds a full percentage point to economic growth each year. So if Americans had trusted one another like Ukrainians do, then over the last 20 years, our per person financial productivity would have been $11,000 less. <laughs> Clearly, Ukrainians don't trust each other a lot. But if we had trusted each other like New Zealanders do, it would have been $16,000 more. Well, no wonder everyone wants to move to New Zealand, right? It's not just Lord of the Rings. It's, they trust each other. But trust doesn't just lead to more money. It, it leads to amazing achievements. Over 12 years, the basketball teams from UCLA won 10 national championships, including seven of those in a row. Since that achievement 50 years ago, no other basketball team has ever won more than two in a row. Now, what lay behind the success? Well, certainly they had talented players, John Walton, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, but, but so did all the other teams. What UCLA had was a legendary coach, the Wizard of Westwood, John Wooden. And, and Wooden emphasized, above all things, trust. He said, without trust between a leader and a team, there really is no team at all, just a collection of individuals who don't amount to much. And with that presumption of trust, those teams achieved a winning streak that no other team in any other sport has ever come close to equaling. Yet even so, people still distrust these days more than ever. And why? It's because they believe a lie. A lie proven untrue again and again. They may not even realize they believe the lie unless they go through an exercise like I did that night years ago. But that lie of distrust still sabotages their life, maybe even their livelihood. And it's just one of the lies that holds you back. So how do you break free? How do you break free from the lies that hold you? From the lies that live within you and live into the truth? In these words from Scripture, God begins to show the way. So let's listen and hear what God has to say. And as we read together from Paul's letter to the church at Corinth, Beginning in the third verse of the 10th chapter, Paul writes, Indeed, we live as human beings, but we do not rage war according to human standards. For the weapons of our warfare are not merely human, but they have divine power to destroy strongholds. We destroy arguments and every proud obstacle raised up against the knowledge of God 
And we take every thought captive to obey Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. How do you free yourself from the lies that hold you back? How do you break free? Here God tells you, you face the fact that you are fighting a war. A war with outposts in your own head, but a war God has given you the power to win. But here's the problem. It's hard to fight a war that you don't even realize you're in. And that's where lots of people find themselves. They live in a world where the lies have captured them and they don't even realize they're prisoners. It's like those folks that attended that seminar with me all those years ago. They had come to believe a lie that people can't be trusted. But only a little thinking will show you that even those who said they didn't trust each other did live that way, at least completely. Heck, you could never go through a green light if you didn't trust that the cars in the other direction would stop at the red. You cannot even drive without some level of trust in drivers around you. No one can live without trust. I love the way the writer John Bixagno put it. He says, faith, trust is at the heart of life. You go to a doctor whose name you cannot pronounce. He or she gives you a prescription that you cannot read. You take it to a pharmacist you have never seen. She gives you a medicine you do not understand, and yet you take it, right? Come on, who hasn't done that? And yet so many people still get caught up in a lie that they don't even live by. But that belief, that lie, still limits their life. And I'm just talking one of the lies that limit folks. So many exist. Let me throw out a few of the more common ones. I just can't change. I'll always be stuck. Or if people saw the real me, they never want to be in my life. I am not worthy of love. Or how about my life is such a failure. I know because social media tells me it is. I could go on. And guaranteed right now, you have been captured by a lie, probably several, and you may not even be aware of it, if you're aware at all. Maybe it came from a trauma in your childhood or some other loss in your life, but you have the lies, or rather the lies have you. Just ask yourself these questions. Do your thoughts more often tear you down? Or build you up? Do they tend to give you peace or anxiety? What thoughts lead you to pull back in fear or get trapped in worry? Are you skeptical of others? Do you lean toward imagining worst case scenarios? Do you have an inner voice that at times tells you you are helpless or that life is hopeless? Do your thoughts help you get closer to others, or lead to more distance? Do they reflect your faith? Do they inspire you to believe you can make a difference in the world? Ask yourself these questions. If you do, they'll help you discover what Paul calls here the strongholds. You see, in the ancient world, at at the center of major cities, you had a huge fortress that served as the city's stronghold, its last stand. And until you captured that fortress, that stronghold, you had not captured the city. A few weeks ago, I was talking to a friend, and he was complaining about how crowded the gym had become. But as he said it, he told me, "I, I don't worry too much. By the time February rolls around, Most of those folks will be gone again anyway. I knew exactly what he meant. Go to any gym in January. It is crowded. But in February, March, not so much. Why? Well, as the old year ended or the new year began, lots of folks focused on changes they need to make in their life. So they joined a gym or maybe went back to the gym they joined last January. And for a while they actually went, but then the habit faded. Now what happened? They tried to capture the city 
without capturing the stronghold. And that never works. What do I mean? During these holiday months, I have gained a good six or seven pounds. I know that by February or March, I'd like to have the pounds off again. And it's doable. I've done it before. I can certainly do it again. But it will not happen unless I deal with the stronghold. And that means thoughts like these. Kennedy, you don't have the discipline to do this. Or, Kennedy, you're old, your metabolism, it just won't allow those pounds to come off. Just give it up. And if I don't watch it, those thoughts and others like them become a stronghold within me. And not only would the pounds not come off, more will come on. By the way, I'm a little nervous telling you that, because in March, if you're like, oh, he's gained some weight, I just didn't deal with that stronghold. <laughs> but the truth is, whatever my perception is, becomes my reality. Whatever your perception is, becomes your reality. Henry Ford said it well, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. And that stronghold is not the only one I have to fight. Again and again, the Bible tells you that evil is at war with you. And it tells you how evil does it. I mean, why does the Bible call Satan, a word that simply means the enemy, the father of lies or the accuser? God is telling you how evil works. It works by lying to you by accusing you, or often accusing God. It, it works by infecting your thoughts, by creating a stronghold of lies in your own mind. Just go back to the very first story in Genesis. It's all about lies and thoughts. The writer and spiritual teacher, Silly Campton, said it this way 50 years ago. It's hard to fight an enemy that has outposts in your head. You've got to defeat the stronghold, the lies that hold you. But those walls do not come down easily. Truth alone will not even defeat them. If truth alone could, the gyms would be a lot more crowded in April than they are. So what does defeat them? Paul alludes to it here. He talks about weapons that have divine power, power to destroy, demolish strongholds. But, but what are the weapons? Just a few sentences later, Paul gives a crucial clue. He writes in verse 7, Look at what is before your eyes to the Corinthians. If you are confident that you belong to Christ, remind yourself of this, that as you belong to Christ, so also do we. In these words, Paul is pointing to the lies that had captured this church in Corinth. Many had come to believe in a God that glorified power and wealth and good looks and charm. And Paul had none of those. Not very charming, not very good looking, certainly not powerful or wealthy. So the Corinthians had come to doubt Paul and his authority. But Paul says here, don't you get it? All of us belong to Christ, the wealthy and the poor, the weak and the strong, the charming and the not so charming. And we belong to Christ because Christ gave up everything to bring us in. And that had nothing to do with worth. It had everything to do with love. Jesus' love for us. Jesus was cast out so you and I could be brought in. And Jesus didn't do that because He admired you. Jesus did it because He loves you. He loves me. He loves this world. And His love did that. Nothing less and when you know the truth of that love, 
That love is the weapon that destroys the strongholds. See, when I know that I belong to Christ, whether I weigh 175 or 275, it frees me. I can lose the weight because I know the weight doesn't determine my belonging or my worth or my worthiness. Jesus already determined that with his very life. God loves me. God loves you no matter what. On our most admirable admirable days and on our least admirable days, God loves us. And that is the truth. And that is the love that sets you free from the lies. That is the truth and the love that this table proclaims. And the more you believe in it, the more you trust in it, the more you let that love live in you, the more the lies fall away. The more every thought you think gets captured by this love, or as Paul puts it, we hold every thought captive to Christ. And when this love captures you, this love of Christ, it captures you to set you free. So where are your strongholds? Where does this Jesus need in this new year to set you free? As you ponder that question, Come to this table, eat and drink the truth of this love, Jesus' love for you. And let Jesus demolish the strongholds. Let Jesus' love do in you what only Jesus' love can. Amen? And as we come, I want to say thank you for the many of you who gave during our Christmas offering this year. And I want you to know that those funds go forth to help us make a difference in the life of our community. It helps us broadcast this over the internet. It will help us build a new website to help us do that better in 2022. It will help us literally keep the lights on so that we continue to be a witness to God's love in this community. And so I invite you to give, uh, continue to give, as generously as God enables you to. You can do so in the plate at the back if you're here in person. You can mail us something at 1530 Hollywood Boulevard, Hollywood, Florida, 33020. Or you can simply go uh, to our website and look for the green button at the top and give in that way. And with that, I invite us to join in this prayer that reflects on God's love for us. Let us pray this offering of prayer. Eternal Godhead, O sea profound, what more could you give us than yourself? You are the fire that never burns out. You consume in your heat all the soul's self-love. You are the flame that drives away the cold. Give us your light that we may know all truth. Clothe us with yourself, eternal truth, that we may live this mortal life with true obedience and in the light of your most holy faith. In the name of the one who is light of the world, we pray. Amen. And as we gather here at this table, this table of God's love for us, let us come to God in prayer. Gracious and loving God, we thank you that your love demolishes the strongholds, the lies that can hold us captive. And Lord, all of us struggle with those lies, those thoughts that can infect us, that can fill us with fear and foreboding, Fill us with anxieties or resentments. 
that can paralyze us and lead us from not living the very life we yearn to live that you created us to live. And so, dear Lord, as we gather at this table, may you free us. May our thoughts become captive to your love. For only in that love, only in that truth, can we be set free. And we pray for a world that is held captive by those lies. Lies that place their trust in power or wealth or popularity or so many other things that do not give life at all. We pray for our nation where too many have come to distrust one another, even our leaders distrusting those who serve with them. And we pray, Lord, that you will break the lies of distrust, not only in our nation, but throughout our world, that you will break the lies that lead people to look to power and violence to solve their problems, rather than the love which conquers all. Almighty and gracious God, we pray for every broken and hurting place in our world. We pray for those continuing to work through this pandemic, um, particularly those in the front lines and hospitals and nursing homes and first responders out there bringing folks to those places. We pray, Lord, that you will surround them with your protection and that, Lord, you will guide us through hopefully we pray what will be the last days and weeks of this long pandemic. We pray too, Lord, for the witness of this church that you will help us, Lord, to invite and welcome and love in these new days so that, Lord, others can be freed from the thoughts that have captured them, the lies that hold them back. And Lord, as we pray these things, we remember the prayer, before we remember the prayer that you shared with us, we remember those particular needs that you've laid upon our hearts and in these moments, we bring those concerns to you. I invite you to do that now in the silence of your hearts or even out loud if you wish. I invite you to do that now. Dear God, we give you thanks. And you've heard every concern, every name that we've lifted to you. And trusting in your love, we remember the prayer that Jesus shared with us. And as your beloved children, we boldly pray these words. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And Jesus, even as you came to be with us, gave your life for us. May this bread and this cup become for us your very body, your very blood, shed and broken for us, that by this meal we may be strengthened and empowered. And as we pray this, we remember those first words that you said to your disciples. On the night before he died, Jesus had dinner with his friends and he took the bread and broke it and gave thanks for it and said, This is my body, which is broken for you. And in the same way, Jesus took the cup and said, This cup is a new covenant shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. And Jesus said, As often as you eat from this bread and drink from this cup, you do proclaim my death until I come. 
These are gifts of God for the people of God. Holy things to make us holy. And today there are two ways that you can share in communion. You can take these handy dandy communion packets that are in your pews and take the bread of life and the cup of salvation. Or if you wish, I will step away and you can come up to the table right here. Take a piece of the bread and dip it in the cup. And I will keep myself distanced so that we're all safe. So whatever way that you choose, let us share in the bread and the cup. We have been at table with our Lord Jesus, and he has welcomed us here as always with open arms. Let us sing thanksgiving to God, and before we do so, let us come to God in prayer. Dear God, we give you thanks that your love triumphs over everything, over every stronghold in our world, in our life, in our minds and hearts. And we give you thanks for the opportunity we've had to share at your table in your love, in this bread, in this cup, in your very presence. We pray that it might empower us, that it might indeed fill us with your love, that it might show us how to serve and love the neighbors we have from you. And so, dear God, lead us this day and free us from every thought, every stronghold, every lie that holds us back from the wonder of your love. In Jesus' name we pray it. Amen. And now, I invite us to join in this closing, this closing song, Yesu, Yesu, fill us with your love, Javon. Show us how to serve the neighbors we 
have from you. These are the ones we should serve. These are the ones we should love. All our neighbors to us and you. Jesus, Jesus, fill us with your love. Show us how to serve the neighbors we have from you. Go forth this day. And may Jesus fill us, fill you and me with his love. This love that defeats the strongholds that demolishes the lies, that frees us to live into the truth of a God who loves each of us no matter what. And may this God bless you and keep you. May the face of this God shine upon you and give you peace. In the name of this God who loved you first, in the name of this God who in Jesus offered up everything, even God's very life for you, And in the name of this God who can work in your mind and heart to demolish every stronghold, to free you from every lie, and to capture you by the love that sets you free. May this God watch over, protect, guide you, and bless you this day and always. Amen. And now let us go out in joy as we go out in song. And thank you so much while uh, Jim was on vacation for filling in for us and doing such a beautiful job.